Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a New Orleans recap video. Places that we went, me and my husband went to eat, visit, things like that. What I recommend them, what I would recommend you guys eat at these places, and things to kind of stay aware of when you're visiting New Orleans that we didn't know about. I'll get to that at the so end. So we actually stayed at the Four Point Sheraton off of Bourbon Street in New Orleans. And if you haven't heard of Bourbon Street before, that's kind of like the big street where all the clubs, bars, parties kind of thing are. So that is where we stayed. We were in New Orleans for about five days. We flew in on Monday night and left Saturday night. That Friday and Saturday was part of Mardi Gras. So there was definitely a different feel from the Monday through Thursday versus Friday and Saturday when we left. So I'll share more about that very soon. So that Monday through Thursday, it was pretty quiet, honestly, on Bourbon Street. It, the clubs and stuff would be kind of busy during the like late, late nights, but once that Friday, Saturday hit, it is jam-packed. You're kind of pushing through crowds. I would say it was more busy than when I went to New York in a couple years ago because you're fighting crowds like this. There's so many standstills like mosh pits. So it's good to avoid Bourbon Street in Mardi Gras if you're not trying to get to the certain bars. Like we just would go like the street behind Bourbon Street to walk. But like I said, our hotel, the Four Points Sheraton was on Bourbon Street. So we did have to walk down Bourbon Street to get to our hotel. There are pluses and minuses with having your hotel on Bourbon Street, especially in Mardi Gras. You have an easier location for you to go to pee. You don't have to use all the bars. You don't have to use like all those weird sketchy pee areas. Like you know where you can go. You can have a rest area. But the fact that you're constantly in the hustle and bustle too is kind of not always the best thing. I will say our hotel room was more in the courtyard area for the hotels. We didn't hear a lot of the party atmosphere and stuff once we were like asleep, but it is something to keep in mind. The security was great. Um, they had bands for the Friday, Saturday, where like you had to show your ID, say how many guests were coming, all that kind of stuff, and they put a band on you so you can be let in. And then you just had to show your hotel key and stuff the Monday through Thursday leading up to Mardi Gras. So that was pretty good. We did a couple of tours at in New Orleans. That's something that me and my husband really enjoy doing when we go to a different city or country or whatever so we did a haunted tour it was from the haunted history tours i'll leave their website down below but we did the five in one tour so it was ghosts vampires witches voodoo and unexplained mysteries and we did that the first night i think it was nope tuesday night and we loved it our tour guide was amazing it was nice to know the history of the location in New Orleans with kind of the ghost stories mixed into it. But what we really liked was the ghost stories were really mixed in with the history. So it wasn't like, ooh, like the goblin or whatever. Like you could kind of see some thought and maybe it's real, maybe it's not. And it was a walking tour, but it was a drinking walking tour. So it was really fun to just kind of walk around. There was a pit stop at a bar, which was, I believe the blacksmith bar and they had a voodoo drink that was kind of like their specialty and so i got one of the purple voodoo drinks it does taste a lot like grape but you know it worked and it was like number three or whatever for that day and my husband helped me drink it so that was fun and then you kind of just tour all around i will say the thing that i mentioned that you need to be aware of and why i don't have so many pictures here on my or videos on my video today is our phones got stolen or my phone got stolen um a lot of people got pickpocketed on our last night that saturday night during mardi gras on bourbon street so i was not the most sober person that day and my husband had my phone in his front pocket and it got pickpocketed so we had to like a lot of other people on no it was friday night on that Saturday morning, went to Verizon and had to get new phones and super big headache. So if you do not need your phones, like past the eight o'clock, 10 o'clock mark, 
I would recommend you guys leave it in your hotel rooms. Do not bring on Bourbon Street. The fact that my husband got it stolen out of his front pocket and didn't notice it. And like I said, it's because the crowds, you're just fighting crowds to move anywhere. I recommend you guys not bring your phone. I did see there are things like that you can hang your phone around your neck, put it in your shirt, things like that. That way pickpocketers can't get your phone. Just something to be a little mindful of. Anywhere like there's a lot of high traffic areas, pickpocketing happens everywhere, but especially Bourbon Street where we saw phone cases that late at night in the morning like lining the street like they were pros at it there was like 17 18 people who needed phones when we were in verizon and the verizon was nowhere close to where we were on bourbon street so we know like a lot of people lost their phones that night so just to be mindful of that going back to things that we did we did a swamp tour this was so much fun i will leave the website and company down below but they definitely do more like alligator excursions you get on a boat and you go down i can't remember what river it was i might have that information if not i'll try and leave it down below and we just saw a whole bunch of things we saw alligators we saw some wild pigs and they get really close up to the boat the tour guides kind of like feed them corn and various like meat treats things like that it was a lot of fun we never really had that experience up close with like alligators and they weren't big alligators because it was still the winter time they said in the summertime there's a whole lot more mosquitoes it's a lot hotter a lot of alligators around which is super fun but i liked kind of seeing all the other animals too we saw baby raccoons they came right up to the boat like climb trees to get treats things like that definitely an experience that you don't typically get like in the suburban areas or in the city things like that so that was really nice they do have like this bus to come and pick you up and take you to the location because it is about almost an hour drive away from the main Bourbon Street New Orleans so keep that in mind but it is definitely something to look into if you guys are interested in a swamp tour. the other tour that we did was the Lafayette cemetery number one tour and this was through the same haunted tours group they did this cemetery tour as well and i really enjoyed it it was a dark stormy rainy day or however you want to kind of spin it but it was raining that day and really cold windy but it kind of fit the mood of going to a cemetery we saw nicholas cage's like little tomb that he wants to be in and hearing the history and things about the tombs were really interesting so i recommend that as well so i apologize we did not go to the lafayette cemetery tour we went to the st louis number one tour i believe i'll leave it down below but that was a really good tour now the reason why we didn't get to go to the lafayette city cemetery tour which is what i really wanted to do was because they're doing a lot of maintenance a lot of historical like renovations things like that so the reason why I wanted to do the Lafayette tour was because I am obsessed with the originals, Vampire Diaries, all that kind of the legacies shows all put together. I love all those. So I was really interested in seeing that cemetery where they filmed a lot of the like witch scenes, vampire scenes, things like that. So unfortunately, we were not able to do that. It was also a 30, about a 30 minute drive from our hotel off of Bourbon Street and it the, by the time we had time to even think about going to the Garden District and Lafayette Cemetery, it was getting too crazy with the streets closing and things for the parades. So we decided to go against visiting that. It was closed for the public anyway, so I couldn't look inside. So we did that other cemetery cemetery tour instead speaking about the parades mardi gras has a ton of parades that kind of happened all during the month of february which is when we went we went towards the end of february starting mardi gras so they have walking parades throughout new orleans and then they also have like the big parades with the floats and things that you see so we went to a couple of them we did one one night and stayed off of kind of Canal Street is where we watched the parade and that experience was great for our first experience. 
super crowded, people fighting over beads. Like beads being thrown at you and people are fighting over them. It was a little too extreme. We didn't care about beads that much, but it was a fun experience and we liked seeing the parade. There were like three parades, one after the other. However, after the first parade, since it took over an hour, hour and a half for it to get to us on Canal Street, we decided to pass on the second parade and went home. Unfortunately, the second parade kind of had a mishap and there was a death from a viewer or parade watcher who decided to cross the street um, during the parade and got ran over by a float. So I highly recommend do not walk in front of parade floats or walk across the street in the parade. That night when we were kind of closer to Canal Street, that is the closest kind of to Bourbon Street. So it's definitely a different feel than where this person crossed the street. Where we were, it has barricades, like those gates and stuff. It had a whole bunch of policemen, everything. So you couldn't cross the street if you wanted to. The policemen would stop you. So that night we were super confused. How did someone cross the street and get run over by a parade float? The next day we walked further down the parade route. We were, we got to the location a little bit earlier and just kept walking. And we walked all the way to the local area, like where all the locals were. And it's definitely a different experience than when you're watching the parade off of Canal Street closer to Bourbon Street. When you're with the locals, you can get so close to those parade floats, you can touch them. You can get like, they hand you their shoes from the muses. They hand you the beads. Like they don't, you don't have to try and hope they like can throw really far kind of thing. So I definitely recommend to walk a little further, go more towards the local side if you do want some of that swag and the bees and the special unique things. We actually were able to get one of the shoes from the Muses, which that was their signature throw. He actually caught two of them, but one, one girl behind him was so upset she didn't get the shoe that he just, my husband gave him her the shoe because we don't we don't need it it's something neat but we don't need it it's not worth to it's not worth the distress over so he gave her one but yeah i definitely recommend seeing the parades more on the local side it's more chill like you get a whole lot more swag and beads and stuff than fighting with your neighbor to try and get that one bead that possibly flew in your area just not worth it so i recommend going the parades walk a little further kind of like you're walking towards the garden district area and staying in the local crowd. It's definitely a more fun experience and you get more swag. So I mentioned the walking parades. We, whenever you're walking around New Orleans, especially during the daytime, random walking parades can happen. So we would like walk to lunch, things like that. And all of a sudden you'll see a police car come and a bunch of people in a band just kind of walking down the street passing out beads and that happened a couple times while we we're there it is a lot of fun the music is amazing in new orleans and the food to die for um and we also saw i can't remember what it was something and they're giving away beads i'll leave i mean boot like bras i'll leave it here but we saw that one as well i think for me i was picturing more for that one than what they did because i was doing all of the floats and stuff like that but you can't compare the two you just have to go into a parade with an open mind each like group has their own unique things that they do so it's really neat to watch and check out as i mentioned i'm a big fan of the originals and vampire diaries and there are certain locations i wanted to check out and i was able to check out on my trip to new orleans one the french quarter it's basically where we stayed at the architecture is so beautiful in the french quarter I love just walking around and just having that feel and just the environment around me. It was so neat and I definitely recommend it. I did visit a voodoo shop. I visited two. Madame Laveau's voodoo shop is really neat. You cannot take pictures, video, or anything. She is a like big voodoo queen. I visited her tomb um, in the Cemetery Number no. 1 tour and... It's really neat to learn more about her. I didn't honestly know anything about her going into New Orleans, but that was kind of a neat experience. And the voodoo stores are like unlike anything I can ex like explain. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of reading, people 
giving money to gods and spirits and check one out if you haven't you need to go into a voodoo shop i also went into voodoo authentica which is also in the french quarter this is actually where rebecca went and went into a voodoo shop so it's pretty cool to kind of like put the two together and I know Vampire Diaries and the originals is just a TV show, but it's kind of neat to go to where they film. Okay, this next thing I'm gonna say I may get in trouble for, but I visited Hotel Royale. So Hotel Royale, you can actually stay at, and I'll leave their site down below if you're interested. But their, when you walk into it, their courtyard is kind of where they filmed Marcel's place, and that's where a lot of the vampire werewolf fights kind of happened and a lot of the big scenes happened so we were just kind of walking past it and i saw opening for the courtyard and my husband's like go 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 check it out so i went and checked it out i was the only one there it was so quiet eerie dark and then you go to the courtyard and it's exactly what you picture it to be but a lot smaller tv always makes things bigger but it was super cool to check out and actually go there my husband thought like I was like trespassing or something which later that night is when we went to the haunted tour and the gates were closed no one could walk in through that gate so we're questioning maybe I wasn't technically allowed to go into that courtyard and take pictures I don't know it was a pretty cool experience I didn't get caught or anything I don't know if I get in trouble now for sharing that with you guys but I recommend you guys check it out if you have it because that was probably the coolest experience for like the originals and putting everything together in New Orleans. So the first morning we actually walked kind of closer to Jackson Square and we went to St. Louis Cathedral. Now we didn't go inside. You can definitely take a tour inside the cathedral. This is the cathedral where Davina kind of has her lair. She kept Michael and stuff in there. So it was really cool to just kind of walk past it. I didn't think that I needed to go inside. One, they didn't do any filming inside. They just kind of did exterior shots of the cathedral. And two, there's just so much other things to do. We watched a performance group right out front of it and they were so funny, had the crowd going. They knew what they were doing to get money and I totally supported them. I'll see if I can find their link or what their name was down below. I really liked it. There are a ton of performers on like in New Orleans and definitely something for everybody from jazz music to just street performers. It is such a good time. I love the feel. I was even able to stop by Boutique, Boutique du Vampire and I was really really excited to check this store out. So this is actually the only vampire store in America if not the world. It was so neat but extremely small and dark. I will say when me and my husband walked into there they definitely there was a lady that was working there but they definitely like looked at us like what are you doing in here there were other customers that like full goth like your stereotypical what people think people who are obsessed with vampires look like and then it was like me and my lily romper and my husband and our north faces and things like that wearing pink and stuff like that going into the vampire store I think everyone can like vampires, but we definitely got like that stink eye, what are you doing in here kind of thing. So it was kind of awkward walking around, but it was really neat to see like Vervain being for sale, va like vampire teeth, like all the books, just it was a really neat store. I did feel a little uncomfortable and felt judged for being in there but it was a neat store. I'd check it out if you're interested. Just be aware if you're wearing pink and you don't look like someone who would enjoy that store don't feel offended like i did because i don't know that was just weird it was weird okay and now for the food stops that me and my husband went to my husband was super excited to take me to this place called the gumbo shop highly highly recommend it we went earlier in the week and then we also went that friday night and service is amazing super friendly the food so good i recommend it i always got their kind of like their trio i think that's what it's called so it has shrimp creole jambalaya and red beans and rice and it was so good i ordered it both times because i could not pass it up that was what i was craving it hit the spot you get all three flavors on one plate so good also recommend getting their hurricane drinks 
they are so good they were the best hurricane drinks that i had my whole time in new orleans so check them out they also give you bread for the table things like that but definitely recommend you guys check out the gumbo shop the next night we went to pierre 424 seafood market and when we first walked up to it it is off of bourbon street i asked my husband is this a chain restaurant like it kind of had the chain feel it was also extremely empty when we went to the food was really good i had a shrimp crab like fettuccine alfredo so good also had a blue drink i can't remember what the blue drink was called if i could find it i'll leave it here um i recommend the food it was great but it just was so quiet in there and it was like a 6 30 7 o'clock dinner on bourbon street you would assume it would be a little more busy than it was that night but i mean when we were there it was extremely cold rainy things like that off and on so maybe that kind of hindered restaurants things like that especially for that night the food was amazing like i said but it was just interesting it was so quiet another day we went to the original pier masperos and i think for me i ordered the wrong thing um so this restaurant my husband got the oh i can't remember some kind of monte crisco sandwich and i got the shrimp platter with fries and hush puppies when you think of shrimp platter do you think that it's fried or not fried I always think it's not fried, but apparently I need to go in the mindset now that it's fried or just ask the question because that was kind of disappointing for me. I was really wanting some shrimp and fries and I got fried shrimp and fries and I'm not into the fried shrimp road. I like more of the shrimp flavor than just like eating a chicken nugget kind of thing without the chicken. So yeah, a little disappointed in that restaurant, but I think I just ordered wrong. Okay guys, the big debate, Cafe Dumont or cafe beignets for the best beignets in new orleans my vote cafe beignets so we didn't actually go to cafe dumont and eat at their restaurant we went to the takeout route they have a window where it's open to the public you can get beignets coffee and things to go so we went to that route ate off of the river it was really nice um we kind of looked off of Jackson Square, just sat on a bench, listened to jazz music, things like that that morning. But you, when you get your your beignets from Cafe Dumont like that, they put it in a white paper bag, sprinkle powdered sugar on top of that, and give it to you. So unless you have that first beignet that has all that cinnamon sugar on it or the powdered sugar on it, it's just kind of like fried dough in my opinion. I needed it also to be a little bit warmer and I really think it would have been better if it had some kind of dipping sauce like a chocolate sauce or a caramel sauce something for me to dip that beignet in i don't know if it's because it had such high expectations it's a cafe dumont like the best beignets you have to eat there it's so famous but it didn't hit the spot for me the next morning we went to cafe beignets and that is definitely more of their chain there are a lot more locations that pop up around the city we went to a cafe beignets that was off of some kind of park where it talked about like the famous jazz performers things like that and it was just so nice we just stumbled upon it ordered beignets and it was so good so warm it came on a plate and it had a whole bunch of powdered sugar and powdered sugar it was sitting on you could get dipping sauces there as well um we didn't order anything but besides the beignets but it was so good they also have an amazing dessert like display case as well if you want like cookies muffins things like that so i highly recommend you guys check out the cafe beignets over cafe dumont route other things to do in new orleans are definitely check out all the shops there are a lot of local shops that sell some artists made from the locals original works of art products things like that which are really neat to look at there's also the french market that people are selling their creations and various items things like that um but it's just a ton of fun to just look into the different shops i also really like the aunt sally's praline shop their pralines were the, my favorite out of any that i tried in new orleans i really wanted to take a box home with me but i knew i didn't need it but definitely check out their pralines if you haven't. I will say our favorite drink that we got, um, or drink vendor, I guess, that we got 
in New Orleans was from the Organic Banana, and this was in the French Market area. They make legit fresh alcohol smoothies or um, what are they called? Coladas, like pina coladas, things like that. You see the actual fruit and the ice and the alcohol and everything mixed together in front of your face. Everything was fresh, no weird syrups and stuff went into it. We really recommended it. We went back another day specifically for a drink from there. I recommend it. There was also a place where we got a drunken milkshake and we got the cookies and cream milkshake. Isaac, I think that was his favorite drink, but I really loved it as well. We also got the gummy bears and that was a little too strong. It was sitting in Grey Goose apparently for three days. I like my alcohol for flavor, not alcohol content personally, but it was a little too strong for me. One day we went to New Orleans Seafood and Hamburger Shop, and this was one of those days we were just walking around. I knew it was getting to lunchtime. We needed to eat, and we checked this place out. I got a chicken pepper burger. So good with buffalo wing sauce on it. Highly recommend it. It was so good. We also went to the carousel bar, which was super neat, and it's actually a bar that's set up like a carousel and slowly spins. We didn't fully stay there. It was so crowded, the line to go sit at the carousel bar, and it's so small of a room. But it was nice to kind of walk in, see it, and then leave. <laughs> but check it out if you have more time than we did and it was less busy than Mardi Gras. But that is my recap for New Orleans, the things that we did and ate. If you're interested in more travel vlogs, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you in my next one. Check out this Disney vlog if you love Disney videos and another video you may be interested in. Bye!